What the heck did that sign say? Coronado? Wasn't he a Spanish conquistador from the early 1500s? In Kansas? Yes, it said Coronado Heights. That away. Could that place be somehow connected to Francisco Vasquez de Coronado? I know he led an expedition into what is now the southwestern United States. In fact, I think I remember that his men were the first Europeans to lay eyes on the Grand Canyon. But I never knew his expedition came all the way up into north central Kansas. What the heck is that all about? I needed to find out. I've been doing some cross-country riding in the Midwest, again in Kansas, when I came across that road sign, and I was astonished by what I found out during my research. It was, in fact, the Spanish conquistador Coronado. As incredible as it may seem, he did make it, all the way into north-central Kansas. I had no idea. So, what's his story? I'm guessing that, like most of you watching, I knew a little something about the conquistadors, which means conquerors in English. Conquistador was a widely used term referring to knights, soldiers, and explorers of the Spanish and Portuguese empire from about the 1500s, during what is known as the Golden Age of Discovery. Guys like Cortez, who conquered the Aztecs, Pizarro, who conquered the Incan Empire, and Ponce de Leon, who went looking for the Fountain of Youth and discovered Florida. I knew something about Coronado, but I didn't know a lot of the specifics about him and his expedition. Most of you probably recognize the name Coronado. You probably remember the name used in an Indiana Jones movie. Remember at the beginning of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, the one where a young Indy and his Boy Scout troop find shady treasure hunters where they were digging up lost Spanish treasure including a golden Catholic cross in some caves in the hills in southwestern U.S. and the cross was called the Cross of Coronado. That's the guy I'm talking about. By the way, that cross never existed in real life. It's a fake. Just a movie prop. Sorry to burst your bubble about that. But Coronado did exist, and he did lead an expedition into the Great Plains of Kansas. But why was he and other conquistadors like him here anyways? What were the circumstances that brought him to the New World? Spanish conquistadors were primarily poor nobles from western and southern Spain who were not able to, essentially, find knight's work after the Muslim Moors were finally defeated and thrown out of Spain and Portugal, many of these knights who fought for their respective kings were out of work. Many of these knights possessed no land and therefore had no steady funding source after the war was over. So, in order to survive, they had to figure out how they were going to carry on as knights. The discovery of America would soon fix that problem for them. In America, they could achieve fame and fortune. So, setting off for the new world was their solution and salvation. Through their contacts and personal relationships with members of the royal court, these nobles soon secured a royal charter and financial support from the Spanish king. They then formed expeditions, secured ships, and then set off to conquer the new world in the name of their god and their king. Of course, the real reason for them making the voyage was in hopes of claiming land and finding gold for themselves, depending on the deal they worked out with the king before they left. The conquistadors would encounter and then conquer the Aztecs, the Incans, and the Mayans in Central and South America, including the territory which is now Mexico. And they claimed these lands in the name of the Spanish or Portuguese crown. 
Their actions and influence still resonates today. This is why most of Central and South American countries still speak either Spanish or Portuguese as their official languages. But most importantly for the conquistadors, they found and stole gold, and lots of it. Many would become rich beyond their wildest dreams. When the word got out back in Spain that anyone who came to the New World could get rich, the floodgates opened, and those nobles who could find someone who had even the most minor connection to the Spanish or Portuguese royal court and who could secure a royal charter did so. And then they made their way to Mexico, or New Spain as it was called then, to find their fame and fortune. Francisco Coronado would be one of them. So here I am sitting on top of Coronado Heights, where Coronado and his expedition set up camp for an extended period of time in 1541. And I came here because that road sign grabbed my attention and sparked my interest. This is where I decided to start my investigation about this Spanish conquistadors expedition into the Great Plains. I was literally standing on the ground where he stood some 500 years ago. And you can see why he chose this spot to set up a base of operations in this region. It is the only high ground in the area and this hill commands the area below as far as you can see. They could observe anyone coming from miles and miles. And with its steep, rocky slopes, this hill is a natural fortress, making this location a great defensive position. And as a military man, you can see why Coronado chose this location. It is the best militarily defensible base in which to operate for a lengthy period of time in this area. It is really remarkable how high the elevation of this hill is in contrast to the farmland below. Anyways, much archaeological evidence has been discovered all around this spot that supports the claim that Coronado and his expedition did set up camp here. So, I believe that this hill is appropriately named. And there is much historical evidence in both the written records from the time and the discoveries of actual feel-in-your-hand artifacts from the Coronado expedition that corroborates the incredible story that I'm about to tell you. This did happen. And so the story goes like this. In 1535, Coronado is a young, low-level Spanish nobleman with no prospects. But through family connections, he is able to work himself onto the entourage of the first appointed Royal Viceroy of New Spain, Antonio de Mendoza, a close childhood friend of Coronado's. And Coronado leaves Spain with him, never to return. And he travels to the New World for the same reason other Spanish noblemen did to seek out fame and fortune. He is only 25 years old. In the years following his arrival, Mendoza uses Coronado's negotiating and natural leadership skills to help settle arguments between the natives and the Spaniards. Essentially, he was the Viceroy's troubleshooter and problem fixer. What I like to think of Mendoza's muscle. Coronado's performance not only impresses Mendoza, but the families of several of the prominent and wealthy Spanish officials in New Spain, including the richest and most influential official, a guy by the name of Estrada, who just happens to be the father of a beautiful, unattached daughter. She catches his eye, and he courts and eventually marries her. Her name is Beatrice de Estrada, and she is only 12 years old. Yes, I said 12 years old. I guess they started them really young in those days. Anyways, once married, Coronado immediately inherited half of her wealth and instantly he became one of New Spain's most influential citizens. By the way, Beatrice would bear him eight children over her lifetime. 
Yikes. Anyways, after a short time hobnobbing with the upper echelons of Mexico City's elite, he was appointed a military commander by his friend, the Viceroy. Following his appointment as the military commander of Spanish troops in New Spain, Coronado makes a name for himself by quelling native uprisings, particularly on New Spain's west coast. For his loyalty and military prowess, he was made governor of Novo Galicia, a newly established province in western Mexico in 1538. Coronado was now a respected leader in the New World, but like all knights who came to the New World, he wanted to get rich, and he wasn't getting rich in doing what he was doing. The only way to get rich in the New World was to go out and look for it. Up to this point, almost all expeditions of conquest had focused primarily on Central and South America. Now, the King of Spain wanted to focus on the North, north of Mexico City. And that's the mission Coronado was given. With a commission from his friend, the Viceroy, he organized a large military expedition. His mission? To explore towards the North and seek out new lands, new native tribes to exploit, and most importantly, to find and plunder gold. When you return for part two, Coronado departs on his expedition. See where he initially goes. Does he find gold? And find out why and what prompted him to journey all the way north into north central Kansas. What does he find there? Find out next time on History on a Hog. If you've liked what you've been watching, please hit like or subscribe to keep up with new episodes. Thanks for watching. <laughs>